Toronto Crenshaw family is getting another shot at justice this evening. The Federal Court of Appeals has reversed a decision to dismiss a lawsuit against the Greensboro police officer who shot and killed him back in 2022. Crenshaw, 17 years old. The body camera video of what happened in the parking lot of a strip shopping center on West Market Street you may remember was released back in 2023. Good evening. This is the Fox 8 5 o'clock news. I'm Neil McNeil. I'm Katie Nordeen. This federal court of appeals decision came yesterday. Celeste Smith joins us now live in the studio with details on the case. So Celeste, what does this mean for the case moving forward? Presenting Crenshaw's mother, Wakita Doherty, in this case, and he said this is a promising sign with it now going back to district court. Um, is, is, is ecstatic that she may get her day in court and seek some justice for her son. Lakita Doherty, Ms. Santo Crenshaw's mother, filed an excessive force lawsuit against both the officer, Matthew Sletton, and the city of Greensboro in March of last year. Police allege on August 21st, 2022, Crenshaw refused to stop and drove his car toward the officer. Officer Matthew Sletton fired through the windshield. He claimed out of a reasonable fear for his safety. No charges were filed in the shooting. We completely disagree with the opposing side, obviously, and even with the district attorney with their decision not to make charges, uh, you know, this is more to it. In the lawsuit, Crenshaw's mother argued there were three additional shots fired through the right side of the car, which hit Crenshaw, who died at the scene, and that the car was moving at a low rate of speed and turning away from Sletton when he fired. I think, in my opinion, the video speaks for itself. In July of last year, the case was dismissed in district court. Soon after, Crenshaw's mother and attorneys appealed the ruling. The court of appeals uh, looked at the video and looked at the complaint, the lawsuit, and they determined that the video complaint did not blatantly contradict. It was like, but I say blatantly contradict that one thing it said in the complaint, the video shows something else. And they said the court should have considered what we alleged. The case will go back to district court. While the city itself can't be sued due to governmental immunity, the defendant in this case is Matthew Sletton. The city, though, may end up responsible for any financial loss. Currently, Matthew Sletton, the officer who is a defendant in this case, is still employed with Greensboro Police Department. Greensboro City's attorneys are representing them and him and have 14 days after the Court of Appeals decision to motion for a rehearing. But at this time, the case is going back to district court. The city's attorneys have no comment on this case. Good morning and welcome to the Bad Apple Report. It's 7.30 a.m. bright and early right here at home on the range. Thank you so much for being here today, folks. You know, I really appreciate it. And we're going to start our day out today in Miami, where it's muy caliente, okay? And it looks like, let's see, it says here, a civil rights law firm is representing a 65-year-old Mississippi woman who says she was assaulted by police in Carthage. Oh, so maybe we're in Mississippi, and that's even, even more caliente, okay? A 65-year-old grandmother says she was reading a Bible and writing a sermon inside her car at a Mississippi park before she was violently assaulted by police officers and detained. You know, that's becoming more common. Now a civil rights firm is representing her. Vivian Burks of Leake County was tased eight times and thrown down on July 23rd by Carthage police officers after they wanted to search her vehicle at the park in the city. Oh, those cops. About 55-mile drive northeast from Jackson, according to the Carlos Moore Law Group. Carlos, I hope you can do good. I told them they couldn't search my car without a warrant, Burke said in a statement to McClatchy News on July 30th. That's when they started to hurt me. Oh, you guys. They hurt my back, my head, my elbows, my stomach, and my legs. Can you guys? Uh, the incident stemmed from Burke's having an expired vehicle tag, the Carlos Moore Law Group said in July 29th. Carlos, you better do good. I hope you do good. Burke's was treated with unimaginable brutality while peacefully engaging in her own personal activities. Attorney Carlos Moore said in a statement, we demand transparency, accountability, and justice, Moore added. Pork, you going to be okay, buddy? Aw, pecan. All right. His firm is calling for the Carthage Police Department to release body camera footage. Hell yeah, we want to see it. Carthage Police Chief Billy McMillan confirmed on July 30th to McClatchy News that Burks was arrested. Oh, really? Billy? Okay, Billy. Why was she arrested? Hmm? 
In a statement, McMillan and Burks resisted. Oh, she resisted arrest in Matlock Park on July 23rd after an officer smelled marijuana coming from her vehicle and saw her expired tag. It was probably coming from his upper lip, lip billy, goofball, Chief Burks. You know, too, don't you, Chief? You know where that smell was coming from, buddy. According to Burks, a Carthage police officer came up to her vehicle on July 23rd while she was parked and reading the Bible. Hmm. The officer told her her vehicle tag was expired. She said, oh, I'm sure he said it in a nice way. I give him my license and registration like he asked, and he even offered to put the tag on for me. Oh, seems to be going well. Then another Carthage officer, whom Burks believes was an investigator, appeared according to the law firm. Oh, that guy. The other cop's like, no. Here he comes. Okay, McMillan told McClatchy News the first officer noticed Burks when they watched her car pull out from where she was parked at Madelock. Mm, we're watching you, lady. She drove to a turnaround and reversed course, then drove past the officer's. Oh, the officer smelled marijuana, turned around, saw the suspect. Oh, he smelled marijuana as the car drove by. That's funny. Ex okay. Saw the suspect car. Also had an expired tag, executed traffic stop. McMillan said after the traffic officer continued to smell the aroma of marijuana from the car. Mm -hmm. Telling you that was his upper lip. That's my opinion. The law firm told McClatchy News on July 30th that Burks was being detained at first for her expired tag before the situation escalated when the officers insisted on searching her vehicle without providing a reason. You can't do that, coppers. Afterward, EMTs arrived, according to Burks' legal counsel, when they finally got there, I asked to go to the hospital, but they said I was fine and told me the officer uh, to take me in to be booked. Hmm. Well, that's nice. Burks was thrown in the back of the police car and taken to jail where she told staff she was diabetic and asked for water, according to the law firm. The medical staff at the jail saw me. and The nurse said I needed to go to the hospital. Okay. Burks was then transported to the hospital and received treatment for physical injuries. The law firm told McClatchy News. Oh, Hmm. So that cop's discretion there on the scene and the and his buddy there, the ambulance, the EMTs. Okay. She was charged with disorderly conduct, failure to comply, resisting arrest, a DUI, and marijuana possession, according to her legal counsel. McMillan confirmed these charges against Burks and said that she expressed opposition to the officer checking the interior of her car, saying she needed a warrant. When Burks stepped out of the car, McMillan said she told the officer she had smoked marijuana prior to coming to the park. Okay. As the officer tried to arrest her, she resisted and added that an ambulance was called to the scene. A paramedic cleared the woman medically. He did not comment on the assault accusations made against his officers. No comment. Burks has since been released from jail. The law firm said, I'm deeply hurt and shaken by what happened, Burks said. The pain is bad, but the emotional and mental scars are even worse. That's America, lady. In the U.S., about a million people experience threat of force, use of force during police encounters each year. The law enforcement epidemiology project at the University of Illinois Chicago reports based on data from 20. 1 to 2021. These encounters have resulted in about 75,000 non fatal injuries, resulting in hospital treatment and between 600 and 1,000 deaths, according to the data. We hear and read about those every day here on the Bad Apple Report. It's more likely that the black and Hispanic Americans will face threats of force from police, the Law Enforcement Epidemiology Project says, citing the Justice Department's Bureau of Statistics. Okay. All righty. So, Grandma reading the Bible. Apparently, token on little Mary Jane. Cops don't like that. Zap, zap, zap. Okay. Two months since an unarmed father of three was shot and killed by an off-duty LAPD officer. Tonight, his family is demanding answers. They want to know why the officer at the center of the investigation is not under arrest and why he opened fire on an unarmed man. Carlos Aceto is live in Ontario where they gathered tonight to call for action. Hi, Carlos. Good evening. Dozens of family and friends of Ugo came out to show their support as well as demand justice. As you mentioned, today marks two months since the shooting death and relatives say they have not heard anything regarding this investigation. A call to justice for a father of three gunned down on this sidewalk in Ontario. It was two months ago that 37-year-old Hugo Kachua was shot and killed following a road rage incident. I mean, he's my buddy, he's my son. He's, he's been an inspiration to a lot of youngsters. On Tuesday, dozens gathered for a candlelight vigil while demanding accountability. And my brother, he, he didn't deserve that and 
we'll always be here to fight for his justice until we get it. Family of Ugo says it all started with a fender bender on Euclid N6, which led to a physical confrontation with Victor Corral, an off-duty LAPD officer. In this dash cam video, you can see the two men struggling in the street on the right of your screen and then popping sound of three shots. Hugo's family claims he was shot from the back. He several shots. And he got one in the head. And that's the hardest part. It was something from, from small as a fender bender to an altercation to a lethal weapon being used and my brother being murdered. Officer Corral was reportedly on medical leave at the time of the shooting. Some question whether he should have been armed. The California Department of Justice has taken over this case, but the family says it has heard nothing about the officer or the investigation. We shouldn't have to fight to get justice. It should be served to us. It should be given to us. We shouldn't have to call and bug. Again, the California Department of Justice is handling this investigation. We reached out to them tonight. They say the investigation is still on. Righty. We're looking at El Stupido from El Paso, a veteran detention officer arrested for bringing drugs into El Paso jail annex. Hmm. All righty. An employee with the El Paso County Jail Annex on Tuesday was charged with smuggling synthetic cannabis into the annex from the El Paso County Sheriff's Office announced on their social media site. Yay! Emoji, thumbs up, wink, wink. Lance Brown, a 35-year veteran of EPCSO and current detention lieutenant. He's an LT. Oh, that's so funny. 35-year veteran. What a knucklehead. Was arrested Tuesday, charged with engaging in organized criminal activity. Oh, EPS, whatever they wrote in a social media post. According to EPCSO, the office received information earlier this month but an inmate at the annex had illegal drugs that was he was distributing them to other inmates. Oh, where'd you get them, buddy? The investigation real, revealed that Brown was the individual bringing the drugs into the facility and giving them to the inmate. Brown. The drugs were reportedly identified as synthetic cannab cannabis. Brown was arrested Tuesday and charged with engaging in organized criminal activity. He was booked in the El Paso County Detention Facility on $10,000 bond. However, he subsequently bonded out and resigned from his post. These illegal acts of high-ranking sheriff's office employees are reprehensible and placed on you know, the health of the inmates in jeopardy. The criminal acts will not be tolerated, and those with this responsible are in big trouble. Okay, and that's it for that guy. All right. Hmm. Oh, Ruby. Oh, Ruby. Tovar. Ruby, won't you take your butt to jail? Okay. Off-duty San Antonio Police Department. Officer arrested on suspicion of DWI. Report of a suspicious person. APB. S-A-P-D. P-B. Okay, an off-duty police officer with San Antonio Airport. Oh, that's S-A-A-P-D. Was arrested Monday night on suspicion of drunk driving. Ruby Tovar, 36, was arrested by the Bayer County Sheriff's Office about 10 p.m. and charged with driving while intoxicated. And that's a misdemeanor, apparently. According to BCSO preliminary report, deputies were called to a McDonald's in the 2500 block of West Loop, 1604. Oh, you guys. She was loving it. Okay, she was passed out in the drive-thru. Oh, yeah. The driver identified as Tovar was awake when deputies uh, made contact with her. The report said she was exhibiting slurred speech. Oh, that's just the way Tovar talks. <laughs> just kidding, allegedly. And deputies detected an odor of alcohol on her. Oh, Tovar who also identified herself as an airport officer. Oh, they always do that. She was trying to play the blue line card. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. The report said she refused to participate in the field sobriety tests, and the deputies applied for a blood warrant. Oh, you're in trouble now. Tovar was then arrested. Jail records show that Tovar posted her bond of 1000 bucks and was released Tuesday afternoon. SAPD spokesperson said Tovar has been employed Okay, with the department for a year, and she's been placed on a minute. Oh, she's had the job for a year. Oh, she was one of those. Never mind. The San Antonio Police Department is conducting an administrative investigation into the incident. You guys better. You, ne you need to investigate that administratively. Unnaturally. We saved the worst for last. A former New Roads police officer and volunteer firefighter in jail tonight after allegedly a child. 
There is new information in that's unfolding about this case. News 2's Jordan Ponzio spoke with the Point Capi Sheriff and has the latest on this investigation. Michael, Sylvia, we now know that multiple people have come forward saying they are victor, victims of Cadrian Williams. One is too many. One is too many. Point Copie Sheriff Rene Thibodeau said Tuesday that they set the bond on him yesterday at $2.55 million. 29-year-old Kedrion Williams was arrested July 20th on charges including a child under the age of 13 and other sex crimes against children. Sometimes you think you know somebody and then there's a, another side of a person that you don't know that comes out later. Williams was previously a volunteer firefighter with Point Capi Fire District 5 and a part-time police officer for New Roads. He was not with either agency at the time of his arrest. Sheriff Thibodeau said the investigation was turned over to his agency after New Roads Police received the initial complaint. To be very transparent, that's why the Point Capi Sheriff's Office is investigating and not the New Roads Police Department. You don't want a department to investigate their own personnel even if they were on a part-time basis. Thibodeau says there are at least three victims and are all under the age of 13. There's no winners in this situation. There's a young man who I think works in Baton Rouge at a plant for construction. And, uh, you know, there's possibly three victims. So it's not a winning situation for anybody. Williams was booked into the Point Capie Parish Detention Center for first-degree rape of a victim under 13, first-degree rape while armed with a dangerous weapon, and decent behavior with a juvenile and pornography involving a juvenile. More charges could follow. It's heartbreaking if, uh, if all of this comes to, uh, to be the, the facts and truth. Thibodeau says he knew Williams from his kid's high school and was shocked when investigators received the case. We thought he was a very nice person, and uh, he was, but maybe he had something going on on the inside that nobody knew about. The Point Capi Sheriff's Office is still investigating and asks that anyone with information contact investigators. Thank you so much for spending your morning with me watching the Bad Apple Report right here at home on the range. You guys are awesome. I hope you have a wonderful day. And as you know, I'm going to whip up another batch of bad apples for you. And we'll see you right back here at 7.30 a.m. bright and early.